Hi everyone and thank you for all the kind comments and well wishes on our from our last video and uh, all the new followers that have come across to find us on Instagram. Um, I got hundreds of messages regarding products and things that we're using with Louis and we're using with our puppy Rosie as well. So I've tried to answer most of them as much as I can um, to independent people but I thought I'd just put this collaboration of videos together which is lots of different clips and bits and pieces um, to describe what we're using with Rosie, what we use with Louie and um, some of the prices and there's some discount codes in this as well. We've, uh, we've managed to do some collaboration with some of the suppliers to get some discount codes for you as well. So I hope you found this useful and again thank you all for your comments. Oh while I remember there's a few people asking if we'd got rid of the camper van. No, no, we haven't got rid of the camper van at all. We've obviously been really busy moving into the house and uh, the camper van's down in the village in storage at the moment. And Aidy and Joe from All Things Timber, um, they're just finishing off some kitchens and once they get to... Uh, uh, up to date with all the work they've got on at the moment, the van's offing to them. Uh, it'll be there for quite a few weeks and uh, we'll have a full interior done, um, like the video I did about their, their fantastic work. So we're really looking forward to that going in and getting sorted. And it's going to be good timing because, uh, you know, like any house, moving into a house, you've got plenty of things to do and uh, plenty of jobs to get sorted in the small time you have off work before you have to go back to work. So we haven't really used the van for a few weeks and uh, I don't think we'll miss it that much for a, a few more weeks while Eddie and Joe do their fantastic work and sort the insides out for us. I have asked them to do some video clips and some photographs so I'll do a video of before it goes in, we'll do some clips and pieces as it's been uh, converted and then we'll do a full van tour once we get it back and hopefully we'll find a sunny day. I'm just up in our new office. This is in the roof of our cottage in the loft space and I would show you this amazing view but <laughs> it's literally blowing a gale and chucking it down with rain and you can't see anything out there. But it's a, a lovely spot. This window opens and you can see right across the top of the moors onto the hillland and we've got another cage in here for Rosie and we've got a bed in here for Louis next to the radiator but it's a fantastic place to work from home so thanks again for all your comments and I hope you enjoyed this video and of course wicked puppies like any other puppies when they're young they want to chew and they need something to chew on and they can get quite bitey with those little teeth that are like pins so you need to have something to hand so when she's trying to bite you you can offer her this and she'll happily chew away on this for hours and uh, eventually go to sleep. But, uh, it helps with the teething, keeps her quiet, stops her taking chunks out of you or putting little pinpricks in your hand. But she's quite happy. We have a couple of different type of chews. These are puppy safe ones from the pet shop and uh, she just chews away on the end of that while you hold it. She enables her to do a teething and uh, it's quite pleasant to hold her and stroke her and she gets familiar with you listening to your voice. Look you, Rosie. Yeah, you're a good girl. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Another key thing about training any dog is about routine. So try to keep to the same routine every day. What time you go to bed, what time you get up, what happens in the morning, when does she get fed, when do they go out for the walk, what's the training session, when do they have to be quiet in their bed or the crate, and just keep that routine going. And they'll understand the routine and they'll follow that routine. So this morning, uh, Rosie got up at about quarter past seven this morning and it was chucking it down with rain outside, so we just popped out to the garden with Louis and um, they both had a wee in, uh, in the garden and uh, did what they needed to do. He had a quick chase about after his ball because he never misses an opportunity. And then we come back into the house and I fed them both. I fed Louis first, we've been him the first dog, the adult dog. And then Rosie went in a cage and got her food. And then we had a mad play for about half an hour, which tied her out. And then she went into this crate, into the living room, when I did some paperwork and some emails and things. And she had to sleep for a few hours. And then I took her out in the garden for another wee. Louis had a mad play with his ball again. And then she's come back in and she's uh, had a mad run around the house. And she's chewing on a chew at the moment. Quite happy in that crate. And Louis, being Louis, being the older dog, 
He's just sat in the chair waiting for the next chance to chase his ball or have something to eat. Aren't you, Louis? What do you think to Rosie joining us? You're getting a bit more used to her now, aren't you? <laughs> Food wise, now if you've seen my video that I did with Louie about keeping your whippet healthy, um, you'll know I'm a big fan of pooch and mutt. And Louie has these wet foods and he has some dried biscuits. This is the puppy version that Rosie's having, but there's an adult version as well that uh, Louie has. And uh, Louie also has these wet foods in a carton. And the story behind this is that I'd looked into lots of different dog foods and the ethics behind them and what products they're in them and how, you know, the quality of the food and the meat and everything. And uh, I'd never come across Pooch and Mutt and I went to the uh, camper van show at Quirky Campy and they um, give the dog ticket owners a goodie bag and in the goodie bag there was some Pooch and Mutt. And they come in these cartons, the uh, cartons are easy to open, or they are with two hands. <laughs> They're actually a tear off lid, so you just tear that off there. And there's a, a really good quality of meat in there and vegetables. And it's all ethically sourced. And it's uh, food. It's, it's good enough to eat as a human. Um, on their website they show people eating it and testing the food themselves as part of their product development and product uh, show. And the marketing side of it is really good as well. But the other thing about this pooch and mutt, as well as being a quality food, is you can order it online as well. And as you know, we've just moved into the country, middle of nowhere. So we have a repeat order with this now. So every month, I know exactly what we need and it just comes automatically and gets dis uh, taken as a direct debit. So we're really pleased with this. And I've actually been using this um for since you started and when we picked rosie up from the breeders and the breeder said they'd been feeding her on pedigree chum puppy food and uh she literally farted all the way home and stank the car out with the poor little girl but since she's been on this she's been absolutely fine uh she's had good poos which is the thing you'll you'll get to know if you're new to having a puppy or a dog quality of the poos is all part of it and they've been great and uh, no farting, thankfully. But on the way back after that pedigree chum puppy food, she absolutely stank. So these cartons just open. And once we've opened them, we just fold the sides down and put it in the fridge. But the quality of the meat is really good. So Rosie's having a little bit of this now as well. And she loves it. She can't get enough of it. We don't give her too much. We mainly keep her on the dry food. But... Um, Louie will probably have, as an adult five-year-old dog, he'll probably have about half of this a day, uh, one of these cartons a day, and the rest will have dried food, the pooch and dried food. And Rosie just has a little bit of this in the morning, and she absolutely loves it. But the quality of it, you can see all the vegetables and everything in it. It's really, really good. And I'll try to do this one-handed. Here she is, look. She knows what's in here. Don't you little, don't you little Rosie, what's this? Sit, sit, Rosie sit, Rosie sit, sit, hey, Rosie sit, good girl, there you go. And as you can see, there's no table manners. And by the end of the day, if there's anything left in Louie's bowl, we put it in there and she does the pre-dishwasher -dish wash. Manners, Lip. Manners, Rosie. Manners. <laughs> oh, dear God. Is that nice, Rosie? Do you like that? Did you enjoy that? Was that nice? Was that nice, Rosie? Hey, is he any left? You haven't missed a bit, have you? <laughs> and Pooch and Mutt have got a number of promotions on at the moment. They're doing like these bonus points. Uh, you get so many bonus points depending on how much you spend. And they've also offered a discount code for my viewers. So there's a discount code I'll put in the description below. And if you order offline, <laughs> um, off their website and put in the discount code, you'll get 10% off as well. But as you can see, she loves it. As you can see, there's a number of different flavours. Chicken and pumpkin, 
turkey and duck, chicken and beef, turkey and chicken. <laughs> and there's just a variety pack. But uh, yeah, really pleased with them. Never had a problem with them. And Rosie's doing really well on their dried puppy food as well. Um, I will try to go through all those ingredients. As you can see, there's quite a few listed on there. But it does give you a chart on the back of how much you need to feed a dog of a certain size as well. Which is really helpful. And there's lots of information and product information on their website. The bags are coming are really good. They're waterproof bags. I just tape these down once I've opened them and I put so much into a plastic box that we have a cup in to feed them from. So we don't have to have the big bag in the house. We just decant it into a plastic box and this is what it looks like. It's nice and small and quite crunchy. And of course when she drinks this swells up with the water in her stomach and makes her feel full. Actually, it smells quite nice as well. <laughs> so, how much does Rosie get fed? Well, hello girl, hello. Rosie gets um, a meal in the morning when she's woken up after she's been on the garden. She gets something at lunchtime and then she gets something late afternoon, probably about half past four or five o'clock. And then that's about it for the day. So three meals a day. We tend to give her... Um, the wet food in the morning and maybe a little bit at lunchtime, but only a small bit. And then the rest of it's dried food. Hey, hey, what do you want? She's not bothered when we move it with her in it as well. Even from day one. For us, this just fits nicely in here. It just fits nicely in there. She's out of the way. And in a safe environment. Don't you, Rosie? Don't you, Rosie? You know your name now, don't you, girl? You know your name, Rosie. And you sit, don't you? You do. You know. Rosie, sit. Rosie's a good girl. Yeah, look. There's a lot to learn, isn't there, Rosie? There's a lot to learn. But you're doing a good girl, aren't you? You're doing really well. <laughs> Are you a good girl? Yes. Sit down. Rosie, sit. Rosie, sit. Good girl. Good girl. It's a good girl. That's not bad after five days she's been with us. Good girl. So the crate is from a company called Oasum, that's A-O-S-O-M. And it's, uh, this size crate is £85.99, currently reduced from £113.99. I'll uh, put the links below, but this is on the website. And uh, it was delivered in a couple of days. And she loves it, she loves it in there. It's obviously a safe place for her and she can see everything that's going on. I've got the cover on at the moment so it's a bit dark. But uh, I think she's about due for a sleep after a mad runabout. So in relation to clothing, um, obviously she's growing and she's growing really quick. So she's into her uh, third week with us now I think. And uh, she's significantly grown in that time. So I've just been to the pet shop when I first got her and I took her with me. Um, and we got some <laughs> jackets and things, that she really likes look, roughly the size um, that would fit her now but she would grow into as well. Now winter's come in and we're living up on the top of the moors, uh, we tried to get Rosie a jacket, <laughs> this little quilted jacket. Um, it's from Three, Three Peaks, it's an extra small as you see. I got this from Pets at Home. It was actually in the sale. I think it was supposed to have a bag with it and it didn't have its bag, so it was about £10. And uh, she looks a bit like Batman walking about in this. Is it? Is that a sheep? Is that a sheep? Is it a sheep? <laughs> but it seems to keep her warm and it scrunches up to next to nothing. And uh, there's just two leg holes at the front and a zip. So it is quite free on her back. But when she wears it with a harness, it keeps it nice and squashed down to her back and warm. I've had lots of questions about where Rosie sleeps on the night. And this is a little carrying crate. This is what we picked her up from the breeders with. Are you ready for your drive home, Rosie? 
It's okay. It's okay. I'll get you on. There's a gate that goes in here, but we've taken that off and it's got a big bed in there. You can see in the back of there, all folded up. And we put Rosie in here at about half past nine, ten o'clock at night, next to my bed. And she'll stay in there, curled up asleep until about seven o'clock in the morning now. So she's got over needing a wee in the early hours so she can spend the night fully in there. And we'll slowly move this away from the bed. You can see where we are. It's quite dark in our room, but she, she, she understands we're there. And she spends a full night in there and she don't get out at all. She just stays in there, curled up asleep. These are the treats we've been using for training Rosie. Um, and they're actually the treats we have for Louis. They come in this sort of size. Um, we break them in half for Rosie. And uh, just use those different flavours. And again, brilliant quality, great container. Um, Louis and Rosie, you know, the shaking of these means the treats are coming out. I do like the packaging on these as well, being in a tube, the slide in the side pocket of a rucksack. So when we're going out anywhere, I can just slide it in the side pocket of the rucksack. And as you can see at the bottom of this one, Rosie likes chewing the bottom of the packet as well, trying to get inside it. <laughs> we left this outside the pub when we was having lunch. Um, she'd had a few of the treats and then decided she wants some more and she was trying to help herself. So she's definitely a fan of them. And inside, they come in a plastic bag as well. But the great containers stick in the side of the rucksack, as I say. And uh, Louis likes them, so we're in out on a walk if you want to give him a few treats. We take these and we use them for uh, training for Rosie as well, for teaching her to sit, lay, and all the various other commands we're trying to get her used to. Rosie, come. Rosie, come. And sit. Rosie, sit. Stay. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Struggle to find a decent harness for Rosie. Um, this is the first one we got, but it's far too big for her. It's got a Velcro fastening. I was hoping that it would link over like that, past the Velcro, and fit her until she grew into it. Um, so it's not the best, it's quite comfortable I suppose, but uh, this was about £6, again from Pets at Home, there's the name of it, I'm sure you can find it online, and that one is a medium actually, maybe if I'd have got a smaller it'd have been a better fit, but the, the problem with this is she's growing that quick, if I'd have got a smaller it'd probably be too big for her, so this may come in later on. Then I bought this harness, and this one is a small. Um, and it's similar sort of design as to the roughwear ones we use with Louis. And all I'm basically trying to do is get a harness that we can use until she's big enough that we can get a roughwear one that uh, we know very well of the best harnesses that we've ever had for any of our dogs. And uh, lots of people with whippets swear by them as we do after we did all those tests and everything. But this isn't too bad. The problem with this one, it's a bit big at the front. So I think I'm having to. Br I'm going to bring those two bits together and put some tape around it to all those two bits together until she gets a bit bigger and then I can take the tape off. Because this front part here, even fully adjusted, is still quite big for her. And when she's messing about, she can get a leg over the side of it and she ends up hopping around trying to walk. Leads. This is a training lead. So when she's in the house, this will be fastened to her harness or the collar. And as you can see, she's had a good chew at it in various places. But you just let this roll about with her and uh, follow her around. And if she's getting into any trouble or anywhere you don't want her to go, instead of having to get up and grab hold of the puppy, you can grab hold of the end of the trainer lead and you have control of her. Um, we also bought a, another lead. And this is a lightweight lead, but still long again, longer than a standard lead, because obviously a puppy is a lot smaller, and you don't want to be reaching down, and you don't want you want some distance between her and you, so you don't fall over her. But as you see on this training lead, it's got a real little clasp, so she don't want a big heavy clasp on her all the time. This one is still quite big, but it is quite light in comparison to the lead that Louis uses. This is a training lead for the use of police dogs. 
So it's got many loops and bits and pieces on it. So she will eventually use one of these. But in the interim, for training wise, she uses the training lead in house. And we have taken this uh, fastened to her in the garden. And uh, she uses this one out outside when she's walking with the harness or with the collar. The other thing with a training lead as well, it doesn't have a big loop in. That has a big hand loop. A training lead just has a little loop in. These are not expensive. I think this was about £4 again from Pets at Home. But you'll be able to find them online. And this one again was about £3-£4 from a local pet shop. So this is the old faithful harness that Louis uses. The Roughwear Webmaster. And um, this is a size small, even for Louis. But I understand they do a extra, extra, extra small version of this. I just need to find a shop that's got one in stock so I can actually take Rosie in and see um, how close it is to her size. But when she gets fully grown she'll be having one of these or she may actually need an extra small one even when she's fully grown. But Louis is um, he's about 20 inches to the shoulder, 19, 20 inches to the shoulder which is a mid-height whippet and he uses this as a small. Um, ben, our last whip, it was slightly bigger, I think it was 21 inches, and he used a small harness as well. There's plenty of adjustment on these and they're really good with a handle on, the light clip, and a good clip on there. Um, if you haven't seen my video about uh, harnesses, um, check out my Living with a Whippet harness, and where we check out various harnesses and collars, and this one come out on top and this was probably about over a year ago probably two years ago we did this and we tried a number since and this is still the best one we can find but they are very expensive um, if you consider those anises I've just shown you those cheaper ones 10-15 pound for those maximum these are like 70 pound but they last a long long time Louis has two of these he has one that he uses for when he goes and gets thick mudder in the sea and then he has a posh one like this but when he's going to work. We found an artist on eBay that does whippet and greyhound pictures and we thought this went really nice in our new cottage. Apart from a different coloured aga, it feels like we've got that many whippets in here. But she does some amazing work. We've bought a few of these around the house. This is one of our favourites, and <laughs> for obvious reasons. Couldn't that just be Louie and Rosie? So she's called B. Lee, and she's on eBay. She does um, originals, and she does prints of her originals as well. But I'll, as I say, I'll put the link in the description below. Did I say something to wake you up? Did I use that word, whip it? Did I? Mm. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep, Louie.